the first question from WhatsApp is from Osama Nazir, profession, student of Punjab University, city Jhelum, country Pakistan. How to do dawa without hurting the feelings of others? If someone is a Muslim and doing something which is prohibited in Islam, then how can we correct him or her? This is a very good question asked by Osama that how can we da how can we do dawa to others, to non-Muslims as well as Muslims without hurting them. Before I give this reply, let me tell you that there is a misconception amongst the Muslim Ummah that most of the Muslims think that when you do dawa, it is compulsory that while doing dawa, you should not hurt the person on whom you are doing dawa. This is a misconception. And one of the most important verses for dawa, which is given in the Quran, which Allah gives us guidance, is in Surah Nahal, chapter number 16, verse number 125. Where Allah says, Udu ila sabili rabbika bilikma, wal ma'azit hasna, wajadun bilati ahasan. Invite all to the way of thy Lord with wisdom and beautiful preaching, with wisdom and beautiful preaching, and argue with them, and reason with them in the ways that are best and most gracious. Almost all the Dais, they know this verse. And they say, this is the guidelines for doing dawah. And many a times, when I go to give talks amongst the non Muslims, the organizers will come and whisper in my ear, Sheikh Zakir, speak with hikmah. You know, speak with hikmah. Trying to tell me that go soft. You know, be kind, don't hurt the non-Muslims. This verse of the Quran of Surah Nahal, chapter number 16, verse number 125, most of the Muslims do not know the context. Yes, the verse is very clear. That invite all to the way of thy Lord with the wisdom and beautiful preaching and argue with them and reason with them in the ways that are best most gracious. So most of the Muslims think wisdom means you have to be soft, you don't have to hurt the person you are giving dawah to and you should be humble. If you see the context of this verse and if you read Surah Nahal chapter number 16 verse number 20 onwards, it says five verses before Surah Nahal chapter 16 verse 125 from verse number 120 it says that in prophet Abraham is a beautiful example. He was a model and he was on Tawheed. The Quran says he was not amongst those who associated partners with Allah. And the verse continues that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give him the best in this world and will also reward him in the Akhirah. And the verse continue. And it says in verse number 123 that that, O oh Prophet, referring to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that we have given the religion of Abraham, that you worship none but Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And then the verses continue, and then it says, Udu ila sabili rabbika balikma. Invite all to the way of thy Lord with wisdom and brief preaching, and argue with them, and reason with them, in the ways that are best most gracious. So in context, this verse is saying that Prophet Abraham is an example. And we know when we refer to the other verses of the Quran that what did Abraham and Salam do? There was a time once to convey the message to do dawah, he broke the idols. And the mushriks were so angry, they said, Who did this? Then they said, There's a boy by the name of Abraham. And they catch him and they ask him, Who broke it? He broke all the idols except the big one. So he told, Why don't you ask this big idol? He will tell you who broke the other idols. So they said that you know very well, Ibrahim, that the idol cannot speak. So he says that when you know the idol cannot speak and yet you worship the person, yet you worship the idol who cannot speak and cannot protect himself. So you know from context that here Hikmah was breaking the idols. Of course, that's not to be done always. So Hikmah means wisdom. Wisdom means doing the right thing at the right time. I do agree that most of the time while doing dawah you should be soft, you should be kind, you should be humble but that doesn't mean only being humble is correct, only being soft is correct. Sometimes you have to be firm. Many a times a father is cruel to be kind. If his son wants to jump from the 10 story building saying I am a superman and if the father tells nicely to his son do not jump, he may have to slap him. So that he doesn't jump. 
So similarly in dawa, depending upon the situation, I do agree most of the time you have to be soft, you have to be humble, you have to be kind. But sometime in a debate, when you're debating, you should be tough. So depending upon the situation, so please get this right that it's not necessary that while doing dawa, you should never hurt the person who you're giving the message to. Sometimes to deliver the message, hurting may be the best. And that's what Ibrahim al -Salam did, not always, but in that situation. To prove his point, he had to do that. Now coming to your question. That if a Muslim is doing something which is haram, how will we correct him without hurting him? Now this comes into Islam. Islam means conveying a message to a Muslim. The word Islam means to repair, to improve. When you're making a Muslim a better Muslim, it's called Isla. And Dawa is the more appropriate word used when you are speaking to non-Muslims, calling the non-Muslims towards Islam. But both these words are interchangeable. Both these words are interchangeable. This reminds me of Hadith of the grandsons of Prophet Hussein Hassan Mallah repeated them. That once when they see an elderly man who was not performing wudu correctly, so they don't go and tell him that the wudu you are doing is wrong. They tell him that please can you observe both of us that which amongst us is doing wudu properly. And they both, they start performing wudu. So the old man, when he sees these young children performing wudu, he realizes that the way he was performing wudu is wrong. So this was hikmah of Hussein and Hassan, may Allah be pleased with them, that they corrected the elderly man being young children with hikmah. So, depending how, depending on the situation, the hikmah demands how well do you correct. So, depending upon the situation, you may have to be soft, sometimes you have to be tough, sometimes you have to be kind, sometimes you have to be rough. But most of the time, a dai should be soft, should be humble. It is more important to win over the enemies than to defeat them. As Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Fusila chapter 40 and verse number 34 that repel evil with good you may never know the person who is your enemy he'll become your friend so these are the rules of Dawa and how you do it it is Hikmah that when you see something wrong being done you don't just snap at the person don't just bombard and tell him that you're doing haram you're doing wrong it will put him off so how well do you correct him how well do you do I give an example of the grandsons of the Prophet so in this way, the more important thing is that you have to deliver the message. Same thing when we speak to a Christian, giving the message. How do we start? How do we break the ice? We, and I always say that Islam is the only non-Christian faith which makes an article of faith to believe in Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. And one of the beautiful rules and master key of Dawa, Allah says in Surah Imran, chapter number 3, verse number 64, it says, that Kuli Hal Kitab, say your people of book, say your people of the book. Talo ila kalimatin sawa im bainan obainakum. Come to common terms as between us and you. Which is the first term? Allah, na'buda illallah. That we worship none but Allah. Wala nushika bin shayyam. That we associate no partners with him. Wala yattakhi zabad dun abad dun arabab and munillah. That we erect not among ourselves lords and pit other than Allah. Fain tawallah. If then they turn back. Fakul shadu. Say be witness. Be anna muslimun that we bear witness that we are Muslims bowing all to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So here one rule is, it is better to speak about the commonality than the differences. So when you see something wrong happening, first you talk about the commonalities. So when you see the Christian doing shirk, instead of directly pointing out the shirk, you come to the commonalities. Islam is the only non-Christian faith which makes an article of faith to believe in Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. No Muslim is a Muslim if he does not believe in Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. We believe that he was one of the mightiest messengers of God. We believe that he was born miraculously without any male intervention. We believe that he gave life to the dead with God's permission. We believe that he healed those born by lepers with God's permission. So here, we are talking about commonality. And then we may come to it that, you know, why all are worshipping and so on and so forth. And you can see my lectures on this. So similarly, when we speak to Muslims and we find something wrong, you have to speak with hikmah. Oh, mashallah, you're a very good Muslim. I see you're doing this. And then you can come to the negative points rather than 
talk about the negative haram things he's doing. So this is hikmah, that when you see a Muslim doing something haram, you can first speak about the good things, oh, mashallah, oh, you're a Muslim, I have a very good beard, mashallah, you know, may Allah give you this. And then you can do, okay, why are you wearing towers below the ankle? You know what the Prophet also said, that you have to wear towers of the ankle. So depending how well you speak, how well you speak with hikmah. But as I told in the start, hikmah doesn't always mean that you have to be soft, sometimes you have to be tough. So hikmah means what is the best thing to be done at the right time. Hope that answers the question.